So what's up guys, welcome back to Gabriel Agia Broad. Remember those slashes you see on melee attacks? Well, that's what we are going to see today, how to create a slash effect. By the way guys, I got a big announcement today before the tutorial. Now you can wishlist a game we have been developing for over two years. And I'm gonna make a video soon to talk a little bit more about it. But for now, to find out more you can check out the links below. So yeah, that should be interesting. So this is what we are going to see today, slash applied to a swordsman, very commonly used across many games, and if you want to get your hands on this project, it's all available on my patrons page. So without further ado, let's jump right into this. So we need a 3D mesh and for that I'm going to use Blender. Select everything with A and press delete, we want a clean scene and then with shift A we can add a cylinder. On this left bottom panel, we can control the vertice in case you want less. I'm gonna leave it at 32. And there's another cool thing here, which is the cap field type. We want to set it to nothing. We don't want the top and the bottom face of the cylinder. And now with spacebar, I'm gonna search for shade smooth. You can go to object and do it here as well. Now let's set her in edit mode with tab because we want to add three edge loops with Ctrl R. You can scroll up to add more edge loops. Press Enter and then Escape. Press A to unselect. And then while holding Shift A, we want to select the middle edge loop. Then we want to turn on proportional editing by pressing O or clicking up here. And with S, we want to scale this up. If you scroll up or down, you can control the influence of the proportional editing. I'm gonna leave it more or less around here. Okay, looks good. And now we can select everything with A, press S and lock it in the Z axis. And you can flatten this until we have this shape. Cool, that's exactly what we need. Let's rename it to slash mesh, for example, and then go to file and in export, select FBX. Turn on selected objects, navigate to your project and export this as an FBX. Now if you go to Unity, just make sure you select the mesh slash 02 and set the scale factor to 100 and then press apply. Cool. From here now we can start by creating an empty game object. We can rename it VFX underscore slash and then reset transform. I'm gonna push it a little bit up and in front of this character. What's important now is that in a folder we create the VFX graph with right click and rename it to VFX graph underscore slash. I'm going to drag and drop this to the empty I just created. Make sure it's 0, 0, 0 in the position and then you can press the edit button to enter in VFX graph. I'm gonna duck it here and well the first thing we want to do is say that this is going to be an output particle mesh and we can already assign the mesh we created. As you can see. Let's remove the output particle quad. And now we need to do a few things. For example, we don't want this to keep on spawning slashes. So let's remove the constant spawn rate and replace it with a burst of only one particle. A single burst, exactly. We also don't want this to move, no velocity, delete it, and lifetime is going to be constant. So random is off, 0 0.3 for the lifetime. Okay, very fast, as you can see. Let's control the size down here with the set size, set it to 1 for now, and select the default particle just to see something. Yeah, this is kind of big and we need to rotate it, so in the initialize particle we can take care of that with a set angle. And if we rotate minus 90 in the X, now it's facing the forward axis and it's parallel to the ground, that's great. We just need one last thing before going to the shader, which is adding rotation to this horizontally, it's a slash, and we can do it in the update particle, it's very simple, we can use the add angle. The axis that will spin this properly is the Z axis. If we set it to 2, 
as you can see it rotates but we want this to slow down towards the end of the lifetime of this slash and it's very simple actually we just need to sample a curve and the way a sample curve works is by well first creating the curve which in this case it's going to be from big to small but not in this way we want to push the handles like this so it's fast in the beginning and then slow towards the end and then it needs the time and in this case we can feed it the age of our lifetime which is basically the lifetime of the particle and it will animate this curve from 0 to 1 according to the lifetime of the particle and now all we gotta do is multiply this with the velocity of the rotation we want for example 10 connected to the z if you play this as you can see it's slashing really cool yeah i'm gonna leave it at 10 for now all right so we have everything we need to start creating the shader right just don't forget to save this from time to time and we want to feed the shader to this shader graph input if you don't see it you can go to edit and in preference in visual effects you can turn on experimental operator slash blocks right so right click in a folder go to shader graph start with a blank shader graph rename this to slash shader and double click to open it up first thing we want to do is in the graph inspector what's the target well in this case it's going to be for the visual effect graph so visual effect we can leave it as unlit which is not going to be influenced by light and now well to make our life much easier let's use a noise you could also use a texture by the way but with a voronoi we can create a very interesting slash as well let's just create a float to control the scale of this voronoi we can call it the voronoi scale 6 by default connect to the cell density and well if we were to connect this directly to the base color save it and assign our shader to the output particle mesh this is how it looks in our slash so basically we need to create a mask for this we just want to show the tip of the slash the one that is facing the forward axis and to create a mask in this case we actually want something radial circular and not a linear gradient the way we can control a circle gradient is by splitting a polar coordinates node the R channel in this case if you connect to a power node as you can see it goes from white to black and black is where we don't see anything so we actually need the opposite of this we can connect the split to a 1 minus node and as you can see we get the opposite effect it becomes pink because there's probably values below 0 or above 1 so let's clamp this after the 1 minus between 0 and 1 just like this and as you can see we get a nice radial gradient and this can be multiplied with our Voronoi and if we connect this to the base color save it this is how our slash looks really cool right? we are already starting to see something with just a few minutes in and that's awesome now let's take care of the color let's create a color property in shader graph i'm gonna set the mode to hdr so we can control the intensity of the color and select white color with 100 for the alpha for the default color this is going to be multiplied after everything multiply it like this connect to the base color and now for the alpha we actually first need to split the color property we get four values and we want to use the alpha one which is the a we want to multiply it with this node and connect it to the alpha input this way we get transparency and we can still use dark colors if we want to have this in alpha blend mode and before testing all of this let's already take care of one thing which is the Vorana it's very static we can animate it we first need to create a float property you can call it the Vorana speed let's say it has a default value of 5 for example and the way it works is by multiplying it with the time node and then we can connect this to the angle of set just like this looking good and before testing this out we can already take care of how do we dissolve this Voronoi we can actually use a power node 
as you can see the B option will basically dissolve this Voronoi and in VFX Graph we can animate this value if we create a float property for the Voronoi power or Voronoi dissolve. Default value of 2 should be enough. Alright, that's it for the shader. So let's save it and let's play with it in VFX Graph. Yeah, if we test this out, that's what we get. It's white, barely visible. What I'm gonna do first is disable the add angle so I can pause this and work on the slash. And the first step I'm going to do is take care of the Voronoi scale. I'm gonna increase it to 10 and then choose a bluish color, something more or less around here. What matters is that you increase the intensity. Yeah, something like this looks very nice. As you can see, the Voronoi power, when it's closer to zero, it becomes really bright. And then if we increase it, it dissolves away the Voronoi. And that's a useful thing if we animate it. And just like we animated the value for the add angle, we can do it here too. We simply need a sample curve. We can select this line and then push the first key to around 0.7, more or less 0.5. So it becomes really bright in the beginning. And for the last key with right click, we can say something like 25, which will probably dissolve most of the slash. Now just make sure that the handles are like this so it doesn't dissolve away in the beginning too fast. And for the time, we can use the age over lifetime property, just like we did for the add angle, and then connect this to Voronoi power. If we test this out without the add angle, this is how it looks. Now, if we turn on the add angle, we get a really interesting effect from this. So yeah, that's how you create the core of a slash with shader graph and VFX graph. Now we can add a few more things, for example, some dark colors will look very nice with this. So let's actually rename this output particle to bright slash. Let's select and copy everything with Ctrl C and paste it here with Ctrl V. We can rename it to dark slash, for example. And one of the first steps that we can actually do is decrease the intensity to zero and then select a black color. And in my case, I'm going to test this out with 4 for the Voronoi scale and 3 for the Voronoi speed and I'm gonna make it a little bit smaller so it's inside of the other bright slash like 0.95 should be fine oh and let's not forget to switch the blend mode from additive to alpha this way we can render dark colors and would you look at that you can see a slight dark shadow now the way this works is we can make it even more darker by, increase the, by increasing the alpha number, the value, to something like maybe 10. But if you look closely, the dark slash is rendered on top of the bright slash. The way we fix it is actually by selecting the VFX graph in the folder and now in the inspector. We can organize what is rendered first and we want to say that the dark slash is rendered before the bright slash. And now we get the wall effect and we get an awesome result. You can then obviously adjust the alpha value if you want this dark slash to be more intense or less predominant. Right, looking good. All right, so at this point, I think it's also nice for you to know how to test this out with a character. I think it's important to mention that you can scale this down, you can rotate this however you want and VFX graph will adapt just fine. So with that in mind, what you can do is, for example, go to the tag animation where you want to apply the slash and on that specific moment of action, you could, for example, find the bone that held the sword and attach the slash and reset to transform. Obviously, the scale will be too big, so you can scale it down. But this is great to get the exact rotation and position for the slash. For example, now you could unparent the slash and you get the exact position and rotation to match the slash attack. With that information, for example, what I did was to create a list of slash, which is a class that I'm going to show you in a moment. And every time I press spacebar, I call a coroutine, besides setting the trigger to attack. And for every slash on that list, I'm going to wait the necessary time and then simply activate the object, for example. By the way, this is the class for the slash. And this is a very trivial system, I just made it to test things out. But you get an idea on how you can test 
your slash with your character. As you can see, I have that script attached to the character and assign it three slashes with different timings. Obviously, you could instantiate those slashes via script or use an object pooling system. This way you get an idea on how to use the slash with a character. And if you want to get your hands on all of these slashes, they are available on my Patreon page. I left the link below. And by supporting me, you get access to even more effects that you can use in your games. So that's it. I want to say thank you to each patron. And a quick shout out goes to the top tier patrons, which are Adrian Biedriski, Elak Frost, Albert Wagner, Austin Schneider, Kruby Dubidu, Dieg Marcos, Donald Thompson, Edward Chai, Eric Hudson, Gilles Walder, Goblin Plague, Guilherme Trindad, John Nix, KC Miller, Lawrence, Leonardo Ferraz, Levin W, Little Tsai, Lobster Posey, Maxim, Mograph Tech, Natsims, Oitsk, Oscar Taminen, Pokey, Radioactive Bullfrog, Revenant Games, Sharat Ravishanka, Toasted Butter, Tyler Burns, Verisuta, Vlad Yakubiski, William Morris, and Ingo Das. Your support is super much appreciated, guys. So I hope you have enjoyed. 21 watch this, like and subscribe, and I hope to see you in the next video. Thanks. Bye.